name is Mandy. I'm a real estate agent in Centurion West with Harcourt. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons of being a real estate agent and how I started my real estate journey. I'm doing this video for people who would who have been considering joining the real estate industry and people who just are curious of are curious about what it's like to be a real estate agent. But first of all, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you find it interesting. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So I started my real estate career in 2019, September. Um, what I did was I sent my CV to a number of different real estate agencies and Harcourt was the first to respond. We set up an appointment for an interview on the same day I sent my CV. They set up an appointment with me to have an interview. I went to the interview. They did explain in detail what is required for one to start in the real estate industry. They did explain to me that I'd need an income for at least six months because selling property is not as easy as we think it is. So <laughs> they did explain to me that I needed at least six months worth of income and that when I do sign my first deal, it doesn't automatically mean that I'm going to get my salary the following day or the end of that month. I'm going to have to wait for at least three months for the property to register and then only then I can get my commission. So they explained all of that to me and I was still interested. Reason being because before I, I sent out my CV to the different agencies, I made sure to do my research. I watched YouTube videos, I Googled everything. And so I went into it understanding just a little bit of how things work and that it was a commission based job. So I went with it very realist. I went into it very realistically, and I didn't expect much in return. So, also because the reason I did send out my CV was because I was struggling to get, um, how do I say it, an office job. Well, what I wanted to originally do was be an intern, a paralegal intern, or an intern at a law firm. And I sent out my CV so many times, I got exhausted, and I realized that. The one thing that was holding me back was experience because I had no experience in a corporate environment at all. I started out as a security guard. After being a security guard, I was, an, I was an au pair. So I never did have any admin or corporate environment experience. So I thought, hey, let me try real estate. And after a year or two, I'll have the experience required. And then I can go back and apply for paralegal jobs or probably by then an internship at a law firm or something like that so that's the reason i sent out my cv in the first place so when they did respond i honestly didn't think i'd sell any property it just didn't sound like i could sign a deal over a million rand i just didn't believe it in the beginning so th that's the whole reason i went to gain experience but then fast forward to a couple months later my husband was the stable income for the six months and it took me seven months to sell my first property i was working hard i was doing the cold calling i was doing everything i was told to do because i mean in the first month i had no idea what i was doing you are new and i was new to an office environment as well so i had no idea what i was doing but everything i was told to do i did the cold calling sending clients emails trying to find listings so it took me seven months to sell my first property. It was, I sold my first property, I believe it was in March, between the end of February and the beginning of March, somewhere there. That's when I signed my first deal. I was so excited. I was over the moon. And the best part of my clients was that it was a cash sale. I was, I just couldn't believe it that, because I had signed OTPs before, but then Another thing is that you don't realize in the beginning that not every OTP you sign is going to go through. They still need to pre-qualify the client, make sure they can they qualify for the amount that they want to borrow from the bank to buy the property and all that the whole process. I had no idea when I started. So I thought every OTP in the beginning, I thought every OTP I signed was actually a check. And it, it, it doesn't work like that. There's still a whole, whole process of getting the client pre-qualified, which I also didn't know about in the beginning that I could pre-qualify them first, then get them to sign the OTP or take them out to view property. So 
I signed my first deal. Um, the lady didn't qualify for the amount she wanted from the bank, so it fell through. I was I was crushed by that because I didn't know. They explain everything to you when you go into it, but it's different when it actually happens. So they'll explain to you how to fill in an offer to purchase, but when you have a client in front of you and you have to fill in the offer, I, I kept forgetting. I'm like, oh my God, what goes here? What do I have to write here? All of that. So it's always different when it's happening practically rather than when you were in training and they were like, this is how you fill in an OTP and they give you all of that training, but it's completely different when it happens in real life because there are different scenarios. Um, sometimes somebody comes with a deposit and you're like, ooh, how do I fill in an OTP when there's a deposit involved? Because you fill it in differently compared to when they're applying for a bond or when they're when it's a cash sale. So <laughs> the lady filled in the OTP. I was excited. And then a couple of weeks later, I found out she didn't qualify for the bond. I was bummed. This was in December of 2019. I was crushed. And then another client of mine, he was also a cash buyer. He viewed a property that I had listed. He loved it. He wanted to get it. And the wife had to view the property and she didn't like it. And I was also, again, I was bummed because everything hit me so hard at the beginning because it was all exciting adrenaline. And then next thing they don't qualify and you're like, oh, here goes my check. So January, February, March, 2020, beginning March, end February, somewhere there. Um, one of the clients found me on YouTube and they actually came down to South Africa to fill in. They weren't from South Africa, so I had to wait for them. I actually didn't believe it when they sent me the email. I was like, okay, this is a scam. I spoke to the manager and she said, no, it's fine. Just make sure you go with your husband just to make sure they're real and you must be on the safe side always because you know, it's not always a hundred percent safe because you're meeting people you don't know and with things happening in, in today's world, you always need to be on the safe side. So I met them, I realized, okay, these are actually genuine clients. They like the property. And then I was terrified of filling in the OTP with them alone. So I called my principal and let her know that they'd be coming to the office the following day, which was a Monday. They view the property on a Sunday. And I asked them to come to our office on Monday so my principal can help me fill in the OTP because it was my first OTP and there were cash buyers and I didn't want to look like an idiot because I'd be like, mm, what goes here? I'm not sure what you're supposed to put there. So I didn't want to do that. I asked them to come to the office and they, the following day they did. My principal helped me with everything. And that was my first offer to purchase. I was so excited. But then lockdown happened everything we were on level five when did lockdown happen in march 2020 level five a lot of non-essential uh, uh establishments had to close which means the deeds office as well so the registering process took a very long time because it was march april may june july i only got my salary in august and the one of the mistakes i did make on that sale i had no idea that i i'm not supposed to include the value added tax in my commission the value added tax must be included in the price of the property i had no idea of that i put it into my commission so <laughs> my commission was slightly less than it was supposed to be but it was still more than i expected it to be so that those are the little mistakes you will make and those are the little mistakes you learn from when you start out in real estate as i've said before they give you a lot of training but it's always different when you do it practically you just gain like you just learn the lesson i don't know it, <laughs> it's just much better when you learn the lesson for yourself instead of when you're doing it in theory so for me i learned everything i i got taught everything in the beginning but then i had to learn everything practically with clients and they're asking me questions and i'm there and i'm like I don't know the answer to this what do i do so i always told them if i didn't know the answer to something i always told my clients that i don't know the answer to that can i call my principal or can i get back to you later and then i'll ask one of the more experienced agents or i'll give my principal a call and ask her so the client wants to know this how does this work and then she'll explain to me and then i get back to the client so i was always honest with my clients told them 
I don't understand this all that and I'm still learning because this is just my second year and I still have a long way to go I still have a long long way to go because I also one day want to be like one of the experienced agents in our office and know <laughs> almost everything and not struggle with an offer to purchase although I've been doing it for a year so um, in 2020 I sold two properties by myself one I had a buyer referral for my colleague so I sold three properties which I never thought I would do so I'm really proud of myself and I'm hoping 2021 is much better than last year and also with the COVID things slowed down so maybe if it wasn't for the lockdown and COVID I would have sold much more property but hey it's life it happens to the best of us so I'm hoping in 2021 I do much better and Honestly, I don't see myself doing anything else. I don't even want that paralegal internship or law firm internship anymore. I just want to complete my law degree and then I'll take it from there. But for now, I'm enjoying being a real estate agent. I mean, the fun part about this job, this job for me is that no deal is the same and you get to learn something new with every deal you sign and all the different clients you get to meet, be it buyers or sellers. I mean, you get to make a difference in these people's lives and you get to learn something from each and every person that you come across. I have learned so much from all of my clients and I've learned so much from the people I work with, with, with the people I work with as well. They're so amazing and they're always willing to help me. And that's what I found very great about this. And that's what I enjoy most about doing my job is that I never have to worry about things that I don't know. Or things that I don't understand because the team that I work with is amazing and very supportive and most of them are very experienced so I get to learn a lot from very experienced agents part of the reason why I really enjoy my job is that I can learn a lot and I can apply it in what I do as well not only in selling real estate but just life principles I get to meet a lot of different people and I pick up a lot of different things from them and learn a lot of different things as well so that's the best part of my job the other thing is that it's very it's, it's a flexible job so I don't have anyone behind me pushing me telling me what to do when to do it why to do it but another thing with being your own boss is that you're not always motivated to do your work so it's important that you find motivation and you stay enthusiastic if, you, if I only work on the days I'm feeling great, then I'm not going to do much in my real estate career and in my life in general. If I decide to work on days when I'm feeling great or work on days where I'm very motivated and enthusiastic. Another thing is that motivation doesn't last. So being your own boss, you need to motivate yourself because there's no one motivating you, telling you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Why don't you do this? You need to motivate yourself. Your goals must motivate you. You must put goals in place. And when you have that, you must curate a plan on how am I going to accomplish this goal or how am I going to achieve that? So it's important to motivate yourself as much as you can. Read books, watch motivational videos, if needs be, as much as you can or on a daily basis. So you can keep pushing and keep working hard towards the goals that you want to achieve. So the other thing that is nice about the job is that the more work you put in, the more you get out. So if you work 50 hours a day or 50 hours a week, it's up to you because whatever you put in with real estate, at the end of the day, you're going to get out. I mean, there are a lot of real estate agents who are millionaires and who are very successful in what they do just by selling property and you must remember this is a commission-based job so you can make as much money as you want or you can be as successful as you want to be you can have your own plan and if you stick to that plan and you work hard you are going to achieve your goals um the downside about the job is that not all clients are nice i mean a lot of times clients have brought me to tears i won't lie not all clients are going to be friendly and bubbly and all of this but that happened a lot in the beginning and now I try to not let it get to me because it's part of business and I think it's part of any business not just real estate 
working with people is difficult not everybody is the same and sometimes you come across people who are not in a great mood and they're going to take it out on you i've come across that a lot and i try not to take it personally i it used to make me cry <laughs> most of the time in the beginning but i've learned now that it's not my fault i come across these people who are maybe in a bad mood or they're just not having a great day and they're going to take it out on me and another thing is that you need to make sure you have a strategy and you choose the kind of people you want to work with because otherwise then you'll just be driving clients around and having them view all these properties and not putting in an offer so you need to decipher you it gets to that place where you are able to decipher if a client is serious or they're just taking you for a ride and you decide do you want to spend your time with this client or do you, you just pull yourself back and let it go because not every client is going to sign an, a deal and some clients are just going to waste your time so you must be able to be the judge the judge of who's wasting your time and who's a serious client like i said i'm not a very experienced agent i just started in 2019 i still have a lot to learn i still have a lot of experience to gain and honestly speaking i'm enjoying this journey and i just want to go with the flow and enjoy it as much as i can learn as much as i can and gain as much experience as i can i see myself selling real estate for the rest of my life honestly speaking it's something that i really enjoy and it's something that's very fulfilling for me and actually this year i won the rookie of the year award at our office <laughs> which is not something i expected and it, it has made me want to work even more harder and it has made me realize that it's actually doable i can actually achieve as much as i want to achieve as long as i put in the work so i hope you find this video helpful i hope you find it it's inspirational and if you have any questions feel free to ask me inbox me on instagram or leave a comment down below and i am willing to assist you until next time goodbye